This is the Caesar Rodney Institute Policy Podcast. Today, CRI Communications Director Sam Friedman brings you a frank discussion with Hadley Manning of the Independent Women's Forum about the politics of the war on women and the wage gap. Here's Sam. Hadley, just tell us a little bit about the Independent Women's Forum and what you guys are up to. The Independent Women's Forum is a group of women, and we're based in Washington, D.C. We are on a mission to increase the number of women who value free markets and personal liberty. We just had the debate a couple days ago with the Democratic Party, and this this issue came up a lot. The pay gap was one of them, and also the paid leave was another hot topic. Can you tell us a little bit about what the paid leave issue is and what it matters about? Right. Yeah, no, that's just, it is very important because it is, um, you know, a big part of the political conversation today. I think the bottom line question is people wonder if American women are being treated fairly in the workplace and whether or not we really have maximum opportunities to be, you know, both um, workers at work and contributing members of our family and doing the responsibilities of family care, often for children and for elderly parents. And so this strain is something that is very real and very personal to a lot of women, um, but it's also become a hot-button political issue. So the gender wage gap is something that we have heard a lot about for years and years. And the Department of Labor every year puts together statistics on all the working men in the economy and all the working women in the economy. And then they find the average of, you know, the wages of all full-time men and women. And when you compare those averages, you find typically – um, that the number today is close to about 80% that women are earning, you know, they say 80 cents on the dollar for what men are earning. Um, but unfortunately, this average doesn't tell us a lot about, you know, whether women are actually getting equal pay for equal work, because this average doesn't take into account what kind of work men and women are doing. In a lot of cases, men are choosing to work longer hours each day or more hours per week. Um, they may study different fields that are more remunerative. They may work in, um, you know, some very demanding jobs that don't allow for a lot of flexibility, and that's typically a turnoff for working moms. Um, so there's a lot that goes into, you know, the decisions that men and women make about their careers, and um, this affects their earnings. Um, so that's sort of a summary on where we stand with the wage gap issue. But, it, you know, one of the maybe the negative things that came out of the debate is that a couple of the uh, contenders on the Democratic side did mention that they believe in equal pay for equal work for women, and they mentioned it within the context of, you know, this is something that America needs to do or needs to legislate. And that would ignore the fact that more than 50 years ago, we did pass laws in the early 1960s that do require workers um, to be paid the same regardless of their sex. So equal pay for equal work is already the law of the land. If employers are discriminating purely on the basis of sex, then that is grounds for a lawsuit. And some women have sued their employers and some women have won their lawsuits against employers. I have seen statistics, you know, from different groups, including Gallup among them, that claim that young single women out earn guys like me in major cities. So if, is, is that true? And what's the deal there? No, I think that's, yeah, you bring up an important point. And, and some of those studies are accurate. They are finding, you know, sometimes by eight percentage points, single childless women in urban areas out earn their male counterparts. And, you know, I think this is due to, again, many of the same factors that have traditionally driven the uh, male winning um, side of the wage gap equation. So when you are single and childless, um, men and women are very much the same in, you know, the way that they dedicate their lives to their professional pursuits. So that takes the motherhood, fatherhood question out of the equation. uh, equation. And when you look at women in my generation, I'm in my 20s, um, actually, women have earned the majority of bachelor's, master's, and Ph.D. degrees. So if we are, you know, educated um, on average more than our male counterparts, it would make sense that we're earning more, uh, at least until that question of, you know, how are we going to find balance um, with motherhood. But that actually is another question of uh, marriage. Since you're saying that since, you know, with women trying to balance career and motherhood, some people just don't want to get married anymore or they just wait till much later. Does that have any impact on the economy or on women's yes. opportunities? Yes, it does. Um, you know, we've seen this happen uh, in a lot of Western European economies. And now the United States is starting to mimic Western European countries in the way that people delay some of, you know, what we might have always thought of as natural life events like marriage and childbearing. And uh, that age, that first birth of your child is getting later and later, especially for women who are college educated. And so this not only impacts, you know, the decisions that women are making when it comes to um, how to balance a career with motherhood. Um, Sometimes that's 
the reason that they're putting off motherhood until later in life. But of course, if you don't start having children until towards the end of your childbearing years, um, we get fewer children as a whole in, in the whole country. And if we're under replacement levels, then our population starts to shrink and it starts to age. This has impacts for our labor force. This has impacts on our entitlement programs like Social Security and Medicare, which are supposed to be funded by today's labor force. Um, so we do, you know, that, that in many ways that is a, a math problem that we've tried to solve. And some people suggest that immigration might be part of the answer to that question, but certainly as a personal matter, um, you know, women's increased participation in the workplace and our increased opportunities to really be on that track to the C-suite and to have great opportunities to be leaders in the workplace um, has definitely led, I think, a lot of women in my cohort to think, hmm, maybe I'll wait until later to start a family. Thank you so much, Hadley, for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hadley Manning, Senior Policy Analyst with the Independent Women's Forum. You've been listening to the Cesar Rodney Institute Impact Delaware Policy Podcast. Visit our website, CesarRodney.org, for the latest columns, research, and events on issues affecting you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our episode archive. I'm Sam Friedman. Thanks for joining us, and have a great rest of your day.